right, everybody, what I eat for better health and boosting energy. Well, a day doesn't go by that I don't get a question about what I actually eat in a day. In fact, I was walking into my local grocery store yesterday and a construction worker said, hey, Dr. G, what are you eating? And it was actually noon and I said, absolutely nothing, why? And he said, oh, good answer. So uh, yeah, not a day goes by that uh, I'm not stopped about that. Now, if you've read any of my book or watched my YouTube channel, that not eating or shortening your window of eating is the number one way to promote better health and boost energy. And of course, that was my answer for that construction worker. But I'm here to share with you that we should eat short to live long. What do I mean by that? In other words, compressing our eating window, the foods we eat during the day, it's not so important the types of foods that we're eating, and I'll get to that in a minute, as long as we restrict the time period that we're eating those foods makes all the difference in the world. And it's a powerful tool to allow me and you to have some of the foods that we want to eat without worrying that that's going to have a profound negative impact on our health. So let's talk about some of the foods that people associate with energy boosting. And not a day goes by, you don't see a TV commercial or something on the internet that protein increases your energy. Now, as I've talked about in the last two books, uh, The Energy Paradox and Unlocking the Keto Code, let's be clear about this. Energy is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That's our energy currency. And we know that ATP is produced by mitochondria, the little energy producing organelles in most of our cells. Mitochondria have to take protein, sugar, carbohydrates, and fats and break them down to produce ATP. But if you looked at either of those books or listened to them, you know that in our society, we bombard our mitochondria simultaneously with simple proteins, simple sugars, and simple fats. The mitochondria were never designed to handle all at once. And living in the LA area that I do, we produce rush hour in our mitochondria, unfortunately, 16 hours a day. And so energy producing foods like protein, for instance, may have actually the exact opposite effect on producing energy. Plus, be cautious. So many high protein drinks, so many high protein energy bars also are high sugar. And the combo of simple broken down proteins and simple broken down sugars is the perfect way to have gridlock in your mitochondria and actually have less energy rather than more. Another bomb is fruit smoothies. Now everybody knows, oh, fruit's good for me. I'm gonna have a fruit smoothie before my workout. It's gonna give me so much energy to get through my workout. Well, as human studies have shown, breaking down fruit into simple fructose it, by using a smoothie, fructose is the number one way to impair our mitochondrial function in our liver. It actually lessens ATP production and increases fatty liver. And so a fruit smoothie is the last thing you want for energy. 
But, 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 Dr. Gundry, I have to have these things to get through my workout. Well, the exciting thing is, in human trials, exercising on an empty stomach actually has you produce more ATP and get more benefit out of your program than if you ate beforehand. And I like to use the example of my mother and swimming in the summer. Uh, many of you were raised at a time when, uh, after you ate lunch, your mother basically set a timer that you had to wait an hour to go swimming after you ate lunch. And that's because there was an old wives' tale that was partially correct, that if you went swimming before that, you would get cramps and die. And that wouldn't be a good idea. Where did that wives' tale come from? After you eat anything, a great deal of your blood flow is put down into your intestines and your stomach to digest the food you just ate. So if you're going to go exercise, like swimming, for example, you wouldn't have enough blood flow to your muscles because it's down in your gut and you would get cramps and die. So think about that the next time you say, I need an energy bar before my workout or I need a smoothie before my workout. You're actually reducing the amount of blood available to your muscles because a lot of it is down there working. So, remember, ATP is energy. Now, getting a energy feeling from coffee or simple sugar has nothing to do with the amount of energy production you're actually doing. And that's the difference. If you want energy, we're talking about taking the workload off of your mitochondria Lastly, what about a ketogenic diet for athletic performance? Well, as I detail in, uh, in a lot of detail in Unlocking the Keto Code, if you look at human trials of ketosis, m human muscles start to get most of their uh, calories from ketone bodies at about three days into a fast. After three days, we actually switch from using ketones as a fuel to free fatty acid. So you would think from human trials that if ketones were the best source of fuel, that there would be human studies that show a ketogenic diet should improve athletic performance at three days starting a ketogenic diet. And in fact, the research is exactly opposite, that anywhere from three days to two weeks starting a ketogenic diet, your athletic performance plummets, which once again shows that ketones are not the super fuel that people think they are. Plus, we know from human trials with race walkers on a ketogenic diet that race walkers had to actually have more oxygen consumption to get the same level of athletic performance as race walkers eating a carbohydrate-centric diet. So that's why it's really important that we think of energy as ATP production and not as this feeling of energy that so many of the commercials mistakenly aim your ideas at. Don't believe these commercials, unfortunately. So what do I eat for energy? Well, for my patients, I actually want them to eat like a gorilla who lives in Italy. By that I mean you want to have slow burning calories from leaves you want to get all the phytonutrients, all the polyphenols from eating the rainbow of leaves. And you want to get all that fiber for your gut bacteria to make all of these energy substrates that our mitochondria need to become maximized at energy production. And why the olive oil? 
The olive oil is a great source of polyphenols to accomplish just that. Plus, it tastes great. So, eat like a gorilla who lives in Italy if you want endless energy. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry Podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. The higher your triglycerides, the more likely you are to have a heart attack and develop heart disease. Yes, high triglycerides.